All right, back once again. This, this is the third time this week we've recorded. Zach, this is uh, what? What are we doing here? Doing so much work here. I gotta stop. It's sports. It's supposed to be fun, not so much work. Uh, Charlie Burris, Zach Reagan, and then our special guest today is the great VFL and my uh, co-host on the uh, the game day reaction show that we do during Tennessee football games. Jonathan Crompton. What's up, Cromp? What's up, guys? All right, Tennessee in the Orange Bowl. Um, your your initial thoughts getting to play Clemson, a pretty fun matchup. We don't have to go down to the Cotton Bowl and play a group of five or anything. This is this is big. What what are your your thoughts on Tennessee getting the Orange Bowl? Oh, it's huge. We, I mean, when's the last time we've legit been in a um, New Year Six and or the old you know the old BCS era bowl game? It's been a while. Um, so, I mean, it's much deserved. I'm excited for the guys. Um, you know, they've busted the tail a year. I'm I'm very intrigued to see on both sides who opts out and who doesn't. It's always – this time of year is always interesting to see guys that are going to declare for the draft and all that. So, that's – that's honestly, that's what I'm most intrigued about. I wouldn't say excited about that part, but to see who's going to play and who's not. One thing that I was kind of interested uh, in asking you, just from your being a former quarterback, do you think it'll be a big issue, Alex Dolish not being there for the bowl game to call plays or to be a part of that process? And did you ever go through anything like that? I can't remember if, if Cutcliffe. No. Yeah. No. Um, I would say if it if this offense wasn't Heupel's quote unquote baby, I would say it would be a, a slighter or a slightly bigger deal. Um. But you know what I'm saying? This is kind of his deal. Um, and it, he's an offensive guy. I w- it's not as big of a deal. Uh, it's a personal opinion because I still think it's going to flow just as smooth. Um, I don't I, I don't know if they've announced, you know, who's going to actually call plays during the bowl game. I'm assuming Heupel. Yeah, I think so. But in, in these games, you know, everybody talks about, motivation and everything that's always the talking points who who really wants to be there did you experience that in, in your time playing like bowl games when it's not bcs level where you're just like eh do we even want to show up or is it just you're excited to play another game oh that's i mean that's a, a... oh did we lose him you there nope there we go you're back you got keep going. Okay. I was just saying when I was, when I was playing, you know, there was no opt outs. Nobody had ever opted out um, until Fournette did it. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's different today. Today. I think the sense is, and I don't blame the players for this. I truly don't. You got to get your money. Um, playing for a national championship. Obviously that's a little different, but there are still going to be some kids that will opt out even in the playoff because they're thinking of their long-term future. I understand that will piss a lot of people off when, when instead players do that. I get it. You want to see your best players play. Um, The hard part is football is non-guaranteed. And so it's hard. I see both sides is what I'm getting at. We never really ran into the issue of it not feeling like a big game because nobody had ever opted out. It was – a reward to play in the bowl game. Yes, you got a quote unquote mini vacation, but you still went about it like a normal work week. You're just in a new location. That was all. Um, it's just a different world. Um, I think we're adapting each year, and it's it's you know it's something new is always going to pop up as we. Well, when it comes to this this bowl game, it seems like one of the big storylines is going to be Joe Milton and how he plays against uh, probably the best team he's faced because he hasn't seen a lot of action over the past two years. Do you think that Josh Heupel will look at this game as kind of like a tryout? Like, okay, let's see how Milton does against a team like Clemson. If he does well, we won't pursue somebody in the portal. If he struggles, do you think that means that suddenly Tennessee starts looking around for for another quarterback for next year? I think we look around either way. Um if you're in today's college football, if you're not always finding the upgrade, so to speak, even if they're not an upgrade, that's just the mindset is then you're falling behind. 
and especially at the QB position. Um, so I personally, I think we go after somebody in the portal regardless. But, yes, you're right. It is 100%. This is your – Vandy kind of an interview, but not really an interview because of the weather. We didn't throw the ball. Like, we didn't do a whole, whole lot of stuff because we were just better than – So is that working interview. You're playing a top-10 team, a pretty darn good defense. Um, so now's the time to go out there and, and show what you can do because – you want to go into spring and fall camp as the clear number one. Now's your chance. Now is your chance to prove that. You train a lot of uh, a lot of players. It's you train college and high school both, right? Like dudes that are. Yeah. Are, so, have you talked to anybody who has done uh, a, a transfer in the portal, like in, in this new version, and like the. As somebody, you know, you said they they didn't opt out kind of back when you were playing. Transfers weren't nearly as common. Do you you think it's a like a bad thing, or are you a little more optimistic? Where now, it, it like in a lot of ways, it can afford like a Josh Heupel the chance to flip his team in like two years, uh, and could be a good thing. What do you think? Yeah, so it's I understand both sides. I really do. I'm going to start with that, but. I remember in my time, the head coach had to say so. He controlled if you left or not. And I'm not going to say this player's name, but a teammate of mine was wanting to transfer back to his home city in the state of Tennessee. And it was a non-conference opponent, so you can kind of read between the lines. But we did play them. And the head coach straight up said, nope, you cannot go. We play them next year. You're staying here. That's not right. I don't agree with that in the sense of back then the coaches had control over if you left and if you left where you went, if you went somewhere you played, they were not going to let you go. So I'm, I understand that's, that's what that sucks. I don't care what anybody says that sucks. I like the portal idea, but I, I've said it last year too. I think they went from a z- zero to a million way too fast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, instead of like, let's piece this puzzle together. It was screw it. We're the wild, wild west. You know what I mean? Like, let's just same thing with NIL. Screw it all. Let's just go with it. I I think in theory it's it's good, but they needed a, a, some more regulations. Um, but I'm not mad at the portal. It's just once again, in theory, the portal makes sense. In reality, the portal has proven, proven statistically to only help top name guys. Though, have have you seen dudes chasing NIL money in in ones that you've? Yeah, why with? wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you think about it? I mean, legitimately, why would, if you're, I'm just going to make up a school. If you are, you know, an all American right guard from, you know, let's use Colorado for instance, because of Dion, right? If you're an all American right guard and you're going into your junior year, red shirt junior. So you're eligible to leave for the draft. And you're like, well, I got a good grade. You know what? I see because it's public knowledge on how much these kids make. I'm, you know, so and so that I play against, he's getting 60, 70 K more than me, whatever. You know, I'm going to enter my name in the portal and I'm going to, I'm going to take a visit to a conference opponent and I'm going to see if I can get more money because if I go somewhere else, I'm an all American, I'm going to play. That's where the portal, like I said, it, it's in theory, I understand what they were doing. In reality, it has gotten to the point it only, really helps top name players because what's the the other day there was what like 711 enter in one day that's crazy there's not 711 scholarships available you know what i'm saying like unless you just go back but as soon as you enter they can fill your position now Mm -hmm. so screw it so that that's where i think you know last year what was it like 19 percent of the kids landed somewhere that was like without late in the summer type deal it was something crazy i don't know if that's actually like the actual number but it was it was an astronomically low number so i'm not mad at the portal some kids are going to use it to their advantage and i said if i was bryce young last year i'd have done it and i would have tried to get more money just to go back to alabama knowing i'm going back to alabama but i would i would have tried to get more money because Nico was making more than him in high school and he you know and he won and i'm saying and he won the heisman so he deserved the money 
That's what kind of made me surprise me that Drake May didn't enter the portal at, at UNC and just announced yeah. he was coming back. Because I mean, I I get it. I I do the same thing too. That's your leverage. I'm 100 percent option. Would. Yeah. If, if as long as you know that they're not going to, you know, in 48 hours fill your spot, and you can always come back. Like why? I know it's and unless the team is just like, hey man, we've got you X deals or however they get them done, whatever. But then why would you at least not try? Because they're they got very creative back in the day on how they did this stuff without NIL with games of pool, poker, stuff like that. So they can get creative on legal NIL deals. Fall is in the air, and that means fall grilling with cookouts, tailgate parties, and so much more. Luckily, the flavor experts at Omaha Steaks have made it easy to savor all the flavors of fall with their mouthwatering assortments of perfectly aged steaks, ultra juicy burgers, and easy to prepare comfort meals that are ready in a flash. And now is the perfect time to load up on all this incredible flavor and take advantage of 50% off site-wide by shopping their friends and family sale. Go to omahasteaks.com and use my promo code VOLS, that is V-O-L-S, at checkout and get $30 off your order and guys i i've said it in these ads for weeks now i've i've had all of the stuff from omaha steaks i can't endorse it enough everything has been high quality it comes right to your door so easy uh and convenient and i mean most importantly tasty so uh i i wouldn't say it if i didn't believe it so don't wait go to omahasteaks.com and stock up today omaha steaks isn't just steak it's the best steak of your life, guaranteed. And don't forget to score that extra $30 off your order when you use Vols at checkout, B-O-L-S. Omaha Steaks is perfect for those chilly and busy fall nights. You won't come close to getting this kind of quality at the grocery store. Visit omahasteaks.com, promo code Vols at checkout. Minimum order may be required. Omaha Steaks. Um, I, I know you're crunched for time here, so I, we have to ask you about Hendon Hooker, the Heisman snub. Stetson Bennett being up there. How how did you react to that? How did you feel about it? And, and do you think they got it right or wrong? Um, I think the Heisman is. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I think it's a joke nowadays. Um, for the fact of it's not the best player in college football. It's the it's the best player on the best team, right? And I think the actual last year, or if not it was if not the last year, the you know, one of the last years that it was actually the best player was the year Eli Manning was up for it when they were not so great at Ole Miss, but he was still there. Because he, de- he deservingly so should have been there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um so I'm not CJ Stroud, I think, should be there. I give him that. Um Caleb Williams, hundred percent. Um Max, I, I don't know. I haven't watched enough of him, just to be honest, outside of just seeing the highlights of like Oh, they made another comeback win. Um, but when you look at best player and you look at statistics alone, which is what the Heisman is, the Heisman is an individual award. Then I do think Hinda got snubbed, and that's not just because I'm a Tennessee guy. That's just from legitimate numbers. I'm not saying Stetson's not deserving, but he's not top four. He's maybe six, which is still not bad. But I just I, – I think it's because he's on Georgia. I really do. What, what do you say to the people? I mean, this has been, obviously, we've had this out on Twitter and been, you know, bashing the Heisman Trophy for the last few days. And the one of the main responses is that Hinden is a system QB. Do you agree with that? Well, well, that has, everybody plays in a system. That would be my response. Exactly. <laughs> and, and I'd say that meaning, and Charlie, you know, on our, on our show, we always go back and forth because that's one, that's what we like to do, just messing around. But in, in we always we agree, but we on air don't always have to agree. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I what I'm saying is I 100 percent am agreeing with what you're saying. Like that is arguably the dumbest thing I've ever heard by them. In the sense, <laughs> oh, he's a system QB. Like, well, what what else can he do? He, he's what was his touchdown? What is it? Uh, in two years, has what three turnovers or three interceptions in two freaking years or something? Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> And, you know, now understand, Stetson Bennett, blah, 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 blah. Well, yeah, he's 28 and one. That's why he's there. Like, what was – it was two – what, 290 a game passing plus uh, however many rushing touchdowns. You, I mean, you look at statistics alone for an individual – keyword individual. This is not a team award. Every player is going to thank their team. But this is not a team award. This is an individual award. 
Stetson statistically is not there. St- take Stetson away from Georgia and plug in their their uh, back their backup. They probably still go twelve and zero, thirteen and zero, maybe twelve and one. Yeah, that seems to be the best. You, you got freaks. You got freaks everywhere around you. They have built that for seven years, and you take Hendon off of us, we're not ten and two, and we know that. Yeah, he, you know, and it's not to say that he's the number one pick in the draft, but when it's an individual award and a player means that much to the team and proves time and time again, then that, you know, like I said, I, I think it's a snub. I really do. Um, Cause if people want to say system, then Ohio state's the ultimate system quarterback team ever. Oh, yeah. Like ever. Back, back to the, the portal thing just real quick. Cause I, I think this is something interesting that people will think about if, if Tennessee does go after a quarterback, how does Josh Heupel manage bringing somebody in? Because it, is a grad transfer going to want to be promised the starting job? Is it is he going to have to tell him he's going to have to compete? How do you manage that if you're Heupel? Um, I know what I would do. I would go after a senior experienced guy. He's got one year of eligibility left. Hence, Leary from NC State um, is what I would do. Because he's one and done. If he doesn't play, whatever, I don't have to deal with it after this year type deal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let him compete, but at least it's not going to cause a controversy because now you have two seniors, Milton and him, competing. Because if – and all I know all the fans all say, oh, Nico, 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 blah, 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 blah. Dude, the reality of anybody relying on a true freshman quarterback to come in and start day one, you stop it. He may. That's not what I'm getting at. But you can't sit here and say we're going to rely on our program for that. Like – and everybody's all hyped up that I guess he's able to go to the Orange Bowl. Phenomenal. We were – everybody that goes in early is able to go to the bowl game if it's after you have came in. But doesn't mean that you're going to sit here and say, oh, hey, by the way, Nico, you're going in on a two-minute drive here. He doesn't know the system. He's never played in the system. So, I, of, like I said, I would go after a senior. Speaking of Nico, are we like are we overlooking Taven Jackson in this equation? Does he stand the chance? Exactly. It's and that's where once again that's what that's what I'm saying. That's why I would go after a senior because then you don't you get an experienced kid that's played right in meaningful games. Not I wouldn't go after a senior that's not really played is what I'm getting at. Um, then you have two seniors compete, so you don't run off Jackson. You can't. We don't want to run kids off. We're trying to build, so we want to keep kids there. So we, we essentially are trying to buy time until our in-house kids get fully developed is the way I – like I said, that's just what I would do. Um, and another year, maybe two tops, then I think we're good to not have to go after portal quarterbacks because then you've got time to develop your kids. You know what I'm saying? You don't – Bryce Young being able to go in and back up as a freshman and play sparingly and come win the Heisman as a sophomore is so few and far between. You know, I mean, and that's, you know, it's credit to him. He's a hell of a player. But like I said, that's just what I would do is I would, and the number one on my board would be the kid at NC State um, just because of the experience alone. This guy, guy Wake Forest, too. Hartman, man. I, well, except he's not actually in the portal, but no, he, he watch this. Just in hype, it's, it's going to talk about essentially this game. If you're DJ, I'm going to Wake Forest. Hartman's going to leave, mm-hmm. and their heir parents in the portal. The backup that played when Hartman was had the blood clots is in the portal. You can go to a very slow developing run game team that they don't throw a whole lot of concepts. He throws a very pretty deep ball and means you're going to throw a lot of go slash post routes and digs. He throws those routes well. That I mean, you know, if I'm him, that's somewhere that you would want to look at. And that's and that's the conversation that everybody's going to start getting to have is. If you're NC State, you don't have an experienced kid now. I mean, uh, Wake Forest, you don't have an experienced kid now. You got to get somebody with experience. That's what we need for 100%. next year. Well, I, I got to throw in here. Part of the reason we brought you on, we got to promote. We're going to have a, a big show for the bowl game, for the Orange Bowl. Uh, with me, Cromp, and as yet undetermined guests, um, we, we don't have all of that nailed down 
yet, but there's it's going to be good. So halftime and post game of uh, of the Orange Bowl, we're we're going to be doing it up uh, big, and so look out for that on on the A to Z Sports social channels and potentially other little partnership with other media outlets. Again, don't we don't have it nailed down yet, but look uh, wherever you're watching this, look uh, here during the game, and and we'll be uh, broadcasting. But to finish this up. With the bowl game, Crump, we're not going to probably talk to you until then. Is Tennessee winning this game? Can we do it with Joe Milton? And and uh, Dabo is out here talking about how his players aren't going to opt out. He doesn't think anybody's opting out of the game. That's a culture thing. So can can Tennessee? Dabo just off? needs to shut up every now and then. God Almighty. <laughs> Dabo is the most annoying coach there is in college football. And I'm not saying I don't know him personally. I'm not saying he's not a good human being because I don't know him. But just the things he says, he thinks that he walks higher than everybody is what it just sounds like. He is annoying as hell. And then he tries to, he tries, he, he, you know, contradicts everything he says. If you, if you listen to what he says. So hopefully we go beat the piss out of him. But, it, you know, I also think that it's depending on who opts out. If you're Tillman, do you play with that injury going to the draft? I don't know. If you're Hyatt, do you, can your draft stock increase? I don't know. I think Hyde's that's playing. the stuff that's going to be interesting. I think Hyde, I hope Hyde's he does going to play because uh, he got that he got that deal with Hyatt Hotels, and we were kind of theorizing like that probably means they're going to like do something with the bowl game. He he got his teammate uh, all a Hyatt stay equivalent to the bowl game stay they would have. So I I, I, I think so. It's fa- so their families can go to the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and like I said, I hope I hope he plays because that. That obviously helps us because they don't have a DB that can cover them. But do Their you defense think is good? Think? But I, I do think I do think that we pull this one out. I do, um, because of the inexperience that they have at quarterback. And as long as we can protect with their pressures, they don't have guys that can cover us down the field. From your mouth to God's ears, there, Crump. We'll uh, we'll see what happens. You mean Dabo's ears? Sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I, could, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help good. it. <laughs> uh, all right. Lord forgive me. The great VFL, former ball <laughs> quarterback, Jonathan Crompton. Uh, we appreciate it, man. And hey, Zach, let's let's stay on for just like a couple more minutes. There was a little bit of transfer news. Maybe we can throw it in at the end here too right. uh, and talk about it. We'll we'll just switch. When, but you, you got to go. You're peddling with an evil phone company. Uh, and you have to go talk to them, Crump. So good luck yep. with that. And, I appreciate uh, it. <laughs> and thanks for coming on with us, man. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you later. See you, man.